Hi, everyone. Welcome to Radiant Living, Inspiring Humanity to Thrive. I'm your host, Marissa B., and today I have with me Tamara Hurl. Tamara is a licensed professional counselor. She's a board-certified art therapist. She's the owner of Wild Divine Coaching and Retreats. Hi, Tamara. Thank you so much for coming today. Hi, Marissa. Well, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm I'm really excited to connect with you and impressed with all that you've been doing. Oh, thank okay. you so much. And I, I'm so impressed with what you've been doing because I was reading your bio and we've known each other just through groups, professional groups, and it's always online. So there's really not that much talking, but I was reading your bio and it so impressed me that you in your business are offering people who are in the healing arts, in the therapies to become movers and shakers, to become thinkers outside of the box. Can you tell me a little bit about how you started this entire journey? Sure. Well, you know, it's interesting. So my my first professional training was as an art educator and then an art therapist. And I just kind of stumbled across that path. Um, I was working, I grew up in a really small town and was very shy. And in my 20s, I ended up landing a job at a small historical museum. And that kind of woke me up in terms of wanting to grow spiritually. And I was taking an art class and someone told me about the profession of art therapy, which I'd never heard of before. And I thought, wow, that would really be fun because I then I could do something that I enjoy and help other people at the same time. That's really been important to me. So I've had many jobs as an art therapist over the years. And then I found myself um, in a position where I was a primary therapist, which was a lot different because as an art therapist, Mm -hmm. what I did all day was art therapy with people, Mm -hmm. groups and one-on-ones, and I absolutely loved it. And then I ended up moving to Colorado because I had always wanted to be in Colorado. And just had a really hard time finding a job in a smaller community um, where I could work primarily as an art therapist. So I started working as a primary therapist, much different than being an adjunct Mm -hmm. therapist um, because of all of the paperwork involved and um, the schedule was such that we were expected to see people back to back and do the paperwork on top of it, which I'm sure you can relate to. And it just felt, it was a nightmare. I mean, I kept saying, this doesn't feel possible. This doesn't feel realistic. And I kept being reassured, well, everyone else is doing it except Mm -hmm. you, um, or everyone else seems to be able to manage it. So I actually went around and talked to, there were 12 of us that were in the same role. And I found out that actually there was only one person who, not, not 12 there was one person who could kind of manage all of that yes. i don't know how i don't know how that that person did it but to me it just felt like i was expected to be a superhero and so funnily funny enough i ended up wearing a wonder woman costume um on halloween one day mm-hmm. just to kind of make a statement but i just i i just felt snarky after that i just could not i thought how can you expect me to do this and cuz i want to have a life outside of work And it didn't feel like I could with the expectations that were placed on me. One of the things that I did, though, um, was in that in that position, I I brought art therapy into the workplace and that helped the clients. absolutely loved it. And um, because a lot of them had been in therapy for years and they wanted something different instead of just talking. So doing the art therapy was really fun. And in another position where I was in mid-level management prior to that one, I created this program called Inviting Creativity and Spirituality into the Workplace, because I realized that there were so many changes happening so rapidly in mental health, and people were just struggling to keep up with it. And being in mid-level management, um, I didn't have the responsibilities of having to see eight clients back to back during the Mm -hmm. day. I had more flexibility. And so I really wanted to support those people that were more on the front lines than what I was. So we met for 12 weeks and it was just a place to talk about. I remember one of the directives that I did was called currents and subcurrents. And so they, I had them make and um, work with a partner and create an image that kind of described what's on the surface and then what was underneath the surface. And I will never forget the image that they made. It was, it showed, they had made it with tissue paper and 
um, I think some oil crayons as well. And it showed um, uh, some people like jumping off of a cliff. They were stick figures, mm -hmm. but it was very expressive, even though it was only stick figures, jumping off of a cliff and falling into the rapids underneath. And I thought, wow, that is a powerful image. And that's how it felt like they were just in the rapids and just trying to keep their head above water. The neat thing about the whole process was that it wasn't just a session where we would come in and complain. The second part of the directive that I gave them was to also, okay, now come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. yes. So it was so cute in the image that they made, they put little parachutes <laughs> on some of the people that were mm -hmm. falling off of the cliffs so that, you know, they, they didn't have to go down and fall into the rapids. And that, now was this a private, were these private agencies or was this a governmental structure? Uh, this was a community mental health center where I was at. Mm -hmm. Right. So they, um, one of the things that, that we did was to measure several things pre and post the project. And interestingly enough, well, the focus, one of the focuses was on, I had them create this, um, it was like um, a quilt. They made these quilt squares out of burlap. And, and I, then I had them decorated them in a certain way to show what things are you leaving behind? What parts mm -hmm. of yourself are you leaving behind? And wow, some of those images, if you can imagine a piece of burlap that has a lot of the strings pulled out and it's really mm -hmm. fancy. Yes. Yeah, because some of them were just so fragile. And then I had them um, add things back in to, to show what things would they like to bring into the workplace. Well, it turns out one of the, um, there happened to be a, a therapist in the group and she was a musician, but she had not been bringing that into the workplace. Mm -hmm. And during the course of the 12-week program, she realized, oh, that's something that's really valuable to me. Why have I not bring, been bringing that into the workplace? So she started bringing her guitar into therapy sessions with her. And the post-testing after these 12 weeks showed that people's um, self-esteem was better. Productivity actually increased because they felt more inspired to do their mm -hmm. work after they were heard and seen and given a chance to... to um, talk about what was bothering them mm -hmm. and to collaborate with other people and say, oh, I'm not the only one. It was also really exciting because that project helped the organization to win an international award for bringing spirituality into the workplace. So that was really rewarding, I think. It was, was for me as, as the creator of that program. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Now, did you try to spread that program along? I mean, I can only speak to how I first started uh, in this um, in this in this lifestyle in this um, type of employment was through a government agency and we had a large what we would call caseload and um you know paperwork was everything and it was a bureaucratic structure and we had to follow it and yes we had courses and classes and we had possibility of doing things but we really didn't have any of this and of course there was a large turnover there was a quick burnout rate um, the names would change, but the problems would never change. Repetition of the same issues and um, employees feeling overwhelmed. Were you able to try to bring this? Because this sounds like a fabulous program. I mean, of course, it won an award. This would sound wonderful to be placed in all of the states um, where employees could have this opportunity. Were you able to do that in other areas? I know you say that you, you're out west and I'm here in New York. Um, but I think this is wonderful. Thank you. I did um, offer it, and um, this organization had a couple of different branches in a couple of different cities, and so I did offer the program in those uh, those other locations. And then um, I haven't really done quite that. I haven't been in that kind of a similar role where I was in mid-level mm -hmm. management, and I think that was key. Although I have done some team buildings and I have gone into a couple of organizations and offered like a day long experience. Mm -hmm. And actually I have just been thinking about this program and it's, so I'm planning to kind of rebirth it and, and take it out and try to get it into some of the, the, the health systems like mental health. Yes. Well, because I know working in traditional therapy um, and having clients coming from other therapists that talk therapy just didn't seem to be enough for them. Right. And some want to try anything that right. they feel will help them. So I've offered a lot of alternative therapies. And of course, anything that deals with the creative and expressive arts seems to 
help a lot of them. At least that's what they're telling me, uh, clients of mine personally. So I've attempted to offer more of those services and to be more involved in the healing arts. And so I think, as you said earlier, that that was the same issue, that it was just not enough. So that's with clients, but also with workers, workers, employees that have to deal with it. I mean, you have to have a creative outlet as well. Like, I think that that's fabulous that you're saying that one of the employees who was involved with music and then why not bring music into your work environment? Also to make your work environment a little bit less stressful, because we know that the job is stressful and we know that the issues are enormous, immense, and that some may not change, correct? They may not change in, a, in, a, in as quick as a way that we would like it to change. So, but I think that this is fabulous that you're looking into this because you also have a private company that you're working the wild divine, the coaching exactly. and retreats. And mm-hmm. you offer that, you offer that to um, people in the healing arts, correct? Exactly, right. Because Because my mission now and my purpose has evolved to the point where I feel like I am meant to support those people who see systems that are dysfunctional and they really want, they know that there has to be a different or better ways of doing things. And so that's my mission is to su- support them. I, I call them socially conscious entrepreneurs. And yes, so I love bringing people out onto the land because that's one of the things that I learned when I was doing that program that won the award is they they said, they said, you know, they're telling us management is telling us we need to help this organization reinvent itself, but we need time and space to do that. And I thought, you are so right, because when mm-hmm. you're bogged down with the, you know that heavy caseload, all that paperwork, you don't yes. have time to be creative. So I love bringing um, entrepreneurs out onto the land. So we have nine and a half acres, and I love bringing people out there, first of all, just because research has shown that when we get out into the forest or in nature, in fact, you can even just be looking at nature or thinking about nature and some of the mm-hmm. same things can happen. But definitely when you're out there in nature and you're just present, fully present in the moment, then um, you're there's a shift that happens physically in your heart and you get out of that fight or flight syndrome and into you know what's called the rest and digest syndrome. So just letting go of that stress and then, um, and I don't know, Actually, the HeartMath Institute did some research about this, and they found that when you get your heart in coherence, then your the strands of your DNA can actually relax slightly. Mm-hmm. And then you can open up to the dormant potential that's inside of you. And my passion is helping people open up to their potential. So do help you know taking them out in nature, having them create images are all ways of helping people just, step outside of the of the way that things have been seen and done and and find new ways of doing things. Well it's it's so true. I know that there was and you can't quote me on it because I'm not sure exactly which doctor or professor had done this research, but they actually did research where they had people who had had either some sort of illness or some sort of surgery and they were all in the hospital. Some had windows that faced a brick wall and others had windows that faced a garden or a a nature scene. And those that faced the nature scene, the garden scene healed that much quicker than the others. And so they've actually done testing with that. So we know that just looking from a window at nature already puts you in a different state of mind. And naturally, and I know that it was so funny because when I was reading your bio, I noticed that you're actually a certified forest, uh, counselor, certified forest coach. And I had been looking into that because I know that a lot of people are talking about forest bathing. And I saw that they actually have, and I believe it's a part of a a group out West that they actually have certification for forest coaching because it is very much um, a method by which people can experience, I guess, mindfulness and a meditative state um, in, 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 in the forest, in the woods. Um, so, and so you're actually using that within your system, within Definitely. your, your retreats. Definitely. And, and there, are, I want to make a distinction between, um, forest therapy and, um, what I call and what some people call nature connected coaching. So I have training in both of both. those fields. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and I'll, I love both of them and both of them have their place. 
So in forest therapy, I'm a certified forest therapy guide. And in forest therapy, I took the certification training. And what we learned how to do was to really get present and pay attention to what, what you're noticing. Mm-hmm. And that yes. has deep value because you can get fully present with your body and, your, and you, you get your mind to slow down. And then you just observe what's around you. And that can be very healing. In the training, they were also very careful to say, you know, and uh, because there were people there who weren't therapists like I was, and they said, mm-hmm. you, you, you're a guide, you're not a, you know, yes. you're not a coach, you're not a therapist. So when, when we do forest therapy, we just have pay, people pay attention to what they notice. And the invitations are very open ended so that mm-hmm. somebody doesn't feel like they're doing it wrong. Right, right. So I love that. I love, yeah, pay attention to what you're noticing it has value. And there was also a part of me, the coach part of me that was like, but I, but I want to know why, why did they Mm -hmm. notice what they noticed? And as a nature connected coach, I've learned to ask the question, what does that mean to you? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So right, because you're a professionally trained coach as well. In addition to therapy. Right. Yeah. So, so for instance, um, I was, had a, a woman who was getting ready to retire and was, I think there were two people. It was a very small group and we were out in nature and I like to incorporate just some time. We call it sit spot. So just some time to sit. Uh, And because it was a coaching retreat, I also had them set an intention before they sat down Mm -hmm. because I really feel like the universe uses nature to speak to us Mm -hmm. and, and the universe wants to support us and wants us to be healthy and thrive. And also for those of us, us who are healthy enough and have the resources to help solve these challenges that humanity mm-hmm. faces, then the universe is there to have our back. So this woman, um, I, she sat, um, bes- she was sitting on a log that had fallen down and there was a, a bush beside her. And she came back and she said, well, I didn't really see anything. She wasn't really, she was just beginning to be open to being taught mm-hmm. by nature. And then, and then she said, well, I did see this one bird that was, it was on a branch that was steady. And then it hopped over to this branch that was um, moving up and down. And then it hopped back over to the branch that was was stable. And I said, well, she had told me that she was getting ready to retire and she was worried about the transition. Mm. I said, well, I think nature was speaking to you through that bird, because Mm. if you think about it, the stable branch is like the career that you've had and the unstable branch is like you stepping away from that Mm -hmm. and, and you know, having that not a solid foundation like the steady branch was. So sometimes people have have to learn how to notice how, the universe is supporting them and then how to interpret those. I call I call them divine signs. Yes. Yes. Now explain to me a little bit about how your because you you have your retreats that are offered to people in the healing arts. So how does the retreat work? How often do you run the w- retreats? Because of course they're in Colorado, correct? Right. They're out in Colorado. Right. They are in Colorado. And um last year I started offering some things virtually too, because what mm-hmm. I realized is that I can set up the experience like we are here on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so I give the it's like I give the invitation. Then no matter where you are, you can go out and do your invitate the invitation. Mm-hmm. And then we come back together and we discuss it. And that's basically what the retreats are. There's, you know, we start out with setting intentions. I want to know exactly what it is that you want to walk away with mm-hmm. when you attend this retreat, either on on site or virtually. So we talk about that and I take careful notes so that I can, because I mean, I usually I start out with some kind of like a skeleton plan of what we're going to do. And if, but I let it unfold organically too. You know, I'm not going to stay stuck to this thing that I had planned if something else Mm -hmm. emerges. So we get, we set the intention, we go out in nature, we come back in and we process the experience. And then based on what showed up during the processing then we might do an art immersion mm-hmm. experience where that could be anything like creating a mask um, or going back out in nature and creating something in nature. Then we come back in and process that. And, you know, what did that learn? What did you notice? What does that mean to you? And how can that help you moving forward? 
So it's just a series of those. And then towards the end of the experience, and they're usually around um, six hour uh, time frame with a break for lunch. Mm-hmm. And then towards the end, we talk about how, you know, how you're going to integrate what you learned into your life. So these are daily retreats, not a weekend mm-hmm. retreat that you run. They have been daily retreats, although this summer I'm planning to run a two day retreat. Now we mm-hmm. don't have facilities on site where people can stay, but there are ton. You know, we're we're right in the mountains outside of Colorado right. Springs, so there's tons of uh, B and Bs that people mm-hmm. can stay at. So and then, well, then clearly, if it's a day retreat, um, people actually can um, participate online. Exactly through their yeah. through their you know through wherever they are, they can participate online. Come back and discuss what they've done what they found what they've created and exactly. and um and again it's called i want to make sure we have the name correctly it's uh wild divine coaching and retreats right and yeah and the and the formal name of the business is wild divine retreat center uh, what usually when i'm talking about it i call it coaching and retreats be- because i also do the the coaching right Exactly. And, um, and you have a website. Yes, you do. I do. I do. It's, it's uh, the wild divine.us. Yes. And I'll make sure that I leave that in the description box for everybody. And I want to know, do you still, I mean, of course you incorporate art in the retreats, but do you still do art therapy with clients one-on-one because you know how our world has changed since mm-hmm. post pandemic, what's going on. Do you still have clients one-on-one? I do. I do. Because I also offer private retreats. There was a beautiful experience. I think it was last summer that happened. And um, so this one woman came out and we we based the whole thing just on what emerged. A lot of it, though, ended up being about the art therapy. Um, She said, I've just been having a lot of roses show up in my life. And I said, Mm. well, let's go out and connect with the roses. So we did. We have some wild roses. And she really that had a profound experience there. And then after, I think we had lunch, then after lunch, um, I had her just start painting. And I said, just choose whatever colors you want Mm -hmm. to. And she chose, I remember there were brown and green and red, and it started out as, as what felt abstract to her. And she, she was, she drew these squiggly green lines or painted that went down and she put some kind of red dots at the top and Mm. she said well I really you know I don't really know what these what this means I think it's just an abstract image and I said well you know I let her talk about what she thought Mm -hmm. it meant and I said well may I share with you what I see and I said to me those those squiggly lines with the red dots at at the top those remind me of those roses that you Mm -hmm. interacted with and roses were a very powerful symbol to her because they reminded her of her sister who had passed on and mm-hmm. and her profound she's writing a book about her life experiences and so it was very profound and this woman had participated in several group experiences group the retreats and when she mm-hmm. first started coming she was very mm, shy about creative and thought she wasn't creative at all and she progressed to the point just by introduced being introduced gently to to art therapy to the point where she could create that beautiful and profound abstract image. So it it was beautiful to watch her creativity unfolding and also her ability to use it as a form of self-expression. Yes, because it really is. Um, it's not necessarily what you produce, but even the, the, the method by which you're producing it, um, what evolves as you're producing it, because many people feel that's a lot of times the first thing they say, oh, well, I, I can't draw, but that's mm-hmm. really not art therapy necessarily, or any of the creative arts actually, or I can't sing or I can't play an instrument, but that's not often the purpose behind which someone picks up one of the tools of those um, those expressions. And exactly. I, that sounds wonderful. Now, clearly she was local. She must have been local because she was coming to you on a more regular basis, even though I know that you say that there are people that can stay in the area and mm-hmm. work with you mm-hmm. on a short term. Um, how are you so, finding that that's ha- going, is that happening more and more? I'm, I'm in New York and we have not gone back to the way mm-hmm. it had been. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have not gone back to the way it, ha- it had been before the pandemic. People are still a little bit leery. I still have just as many clients online 
as I have in person. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, more so online because some have not come back. Did you find that as well in Colorado? Yeah, I think I think it's the same here. I think it's still that people are more hesitant. I th I really think that you know the pandemic changed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I don't think we even fully understand what what has you know how we've been impacted. And you know, even though, like in ja last January, I had a retreat to it was a vision board retreat, and it was virtual. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the clients was in Florida, you know, so she was like, "Yeah, I went out in my we did a nature part, and she went out and was the grass was green, and we were all like, oh, <laughs> but um, yeah." But how did that work the... out with her? She was so you had the, so you had the virtual mm -hmm. retreat, right. and how did that work out? Because I always feel that do, doing art sometimes it. I don't know if it's as powerful for the clients or the the group participants. How did well, that work for them? Yeah, well, it definitely has a different different dynamic because I love being able to see there and see see the work in progress mm -hmm. and actually sit with the client because I it is a deeper experience. I can get mm -hmm. a deeper understanding. However, she was still able to have a really good experience, and she shared the the completed image that she'd created mm -hmm. and the process of creating it and and the whole experience was very profound for her so it can still be deeply mm -hmm. profound i've noticed but what i like is that you offer the one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. so that people that are maybe leery of joining a large group for a weekend they mm -hmm. can actually stay somewhere and work with you right either for one day or a few days while they're at a location that they don't necessarily have to be with many people at right. a large venue right and i love the i love the you know i'm excited about the um the potential of doing the overnight or like the weekend retreats because mm -hmm. the there are things that happen at sunrise and sunset you know the mm -hmm. light is just right and the and the animals behave differently when we go outside and do nature um, nature immersion so i think it's going to be a very magical experience one uh, i'm trying to remember i think it was at um the i think it was at halloween we had a, a we have a labyrinth on our property and we had a oh, nice lovely labyrinth walk and that it was magical oh they're always lovely right especially mm -hmm. in the evening walking mm -hmm. uh, by candlelight and um so now you say that the property you have doesn't have facilities for anybody to stay is that something that you might do or no we might. Yeah. We're, my husband just built a shed and he's going to move all the, we have, a, you know, how you collect junk over the years. Oh, yes. We indeed. have more than our <laughs> fair share. Yes. And it's, it's all in the garage right now, but he's going to move his things to the shed and then we'll have the whole garage that we can transform. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I've thought about, we're going to put at least put a half bath out there and our our full our entire basement is our house is like a duplex and we do have a, a spare room and we did have mm -hmm. one um a couple of people stay overnight i think it was last summer mm -hmm. um and so we we you know we can house a couple of people so now everybody can find this information like whatever retreats that you're doing and so forth all on your website that goes directly there right and do you have social media contacts too do you I I do. I do. I, yeah. So I'm really um, on Facebook. I'm Tamara McDougall Hurl and McDougall has two L's. Mm -hmm. And I have a Facebook group called Spiritually Anchored Visionaries. So I post. Oh, oh that's there. wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I would definitely put that information. Oh, I would love to join that myself. That yeah. sounds wonderful. And it's that's really through fun. Facebook. Oh, great. Yes. Right. And I'm also on Instagram and, and LinkedIn. So. Oh, well, wonderful. And I oh, have a definitely... YouTube channel. Oh, you do? Oh, let's tell me about the YouTube channel. Yeah, most of, um, so I, on there, I was doing a, a podcast. Mm -hmm. I've done it um, for a year now. And it was called Spiritual, it started out being called Spiritually Anchored Visionary Women, but then I wanted to open it to all mm -hmm. beings and not just women. So, right. and I was interviewing once a month, I would talk to a visionary person and have them talk about kind of what we're doing today. How did yes. you get started? What challenges did you mm -hmm. encounter? And how did you overcome those and so those are all on there. And there are some other things that are on there, but they're part of a, um, I'm creating a new six month group, um, not group, but a six month coaching program. That Oh, will include, wonderful. Yeah, it will include the, um, a lot of instructional videos about how to do art immersion and how to do mm -hmm. nature immersion. So 
that, oh, that that's wonderful. Exciting. That sounds so interesting. Thank I know. You. I think we, we had spoken about this before, the way the world is. And we know that sadly, all too often, the hatred, the fear, the prejudice, that is always out there trying to bombard us that these conversations of light and enlightenment and and sharing i think that they're so important on the planet i think that the planet is trying to tell us that we have to change exactly. we have to right we have to veer in a different direction but i think that's wonderful oh i think that's so great the especially the um nature immer- immersion that sounds wonderful and so will that be also on the website when that's put together so everyone can get information yes it's it's on there now i'm still working on on writing the copy but to make it more smooth but it's on there so people can take a look if they would like to and be happy to to talk to anyone that's interested and wants more details about the program it's going to include um, group coaching and also i have a deck of oracle cards that i created oh lovely so it will include re- uh, readings with those and then access to i call it the power up library w- which will have the all the all these videos that i've created and i'm working on an ebook just to kind of guide a person step by step through the process of waking up to their potential so that they can make the changes that they want to. to Oh, wow. So you sound very busy, very busy (laughs) with a lot going on. I mean, I'm so thrilled that you came to speak to the audience today, just to give us a little glimpse of what you're doing, because of course Mm -hmm. we could talk on and on about these subjects. I just think it's wonderful. And um, I will make sure that everybody gets the information. I'd love to actually, I'm definitely going to join the Facebook group. Oh, good. Because I think that making that connection is fabulous with all of us, um, that we should really all connect and collaborate, I think, to assist the planet in evolution. Definitely. Um, I think it's so important. But I really want to thank you so much for coming out today. And um, hopefully we can speak again. I would love once the program is in full swing, I would love to have you out to speak about it. Great. That I think would be great. I'm so sad. I was out West and I would have had, I would have tried to make some time to come out and visit. I never even thought about it because I've been so busy with the show and with interviews um, and holidays coming about, but uh, I will definitely have you on in the new year after your program gets to be in full swing. I think it's good. If you have time, you might be too busy (laughs) at the time. I've always got time to, I've always got time to talk because, you know, I feel like it's just important because there, you know, I tell, I always tell people if look around you in the world and if you see something that bothers you, there's a reason it's a message Mm -hmm. from the universe. Don't just complain. You were born to help those things change. So I always make time to connect with, a wider audience. Well, happy well I thank you and our audience thanks you so much. Have You're a wonderful welcome. afternoon, Tamara, thank and thank you. you again so much. You're welcome. Thanks for the work that you do. Oh, thank you. Bye now. Bye.